returning on Saturday to BBC One, The Keith Harris Show. Oh, I'm excited, because I want to keep watching your in it. Of course you are. In fact, all your favourites. Oh, now this Dippy. I like it. And of course his cuddles. Not the monkey. Yes, the monkey. I ain't that monkey. Oh, well, this is the place, all right. I, I think I'll ring the bell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where is it? Oh, there it is. Keith Harris and, of course, Orville in Cuddles return to BBC One on Saturday at 5.50. The Scottish News is at 5.20 this evening. First on BBC One Scotland, the news from London with Moira Stewart. Western leaders announce new moves against terrorism and single out Libya for blame. International terrorism was top of the list of problems tackled by the seven leaders attending the Tokyo summit. Some of them wanted to avoid naming any one country, but under combined pressure from Mrs Thatcher and President Reagan, Libya was labelled as a state clearly involved in sponsoring or supporting terrorist acts. From Tokyo, Brian Barron. After a shaky start on drafting a terrorism declaration, the summit leaders went the whole hog and named Libya. The summit singled out the Gaddafi regime to the satisfaction of Mrs Thatcher and President Reagan. What the summit measures mean is this. No arms sale to any country like Libya supporting terrorism, strict limits on the size of their embassies and even closure, a ban on any diplomat suspected of links with terrorism, better extradition procedures among summit countries of terrorist suspects, closer ties between Western police and intelligence agencies. It was the British who pushed hardest. A memo to Mrs Thatcher warned her that the summit official's original draft was weak. A midday break in the Akasaka Palace Garden, followed by a working lunch in a Japanese pavilion, meant they all literally got down to business. And for Mr Reagan, three weeks after his Libyan bombing raid, the split in the Western Alliance had been patched up. I asked the Foreign Secretary if the declaration goes far enough. I think it's a very solid achievement. It's a declaration on terrorism committing the seven summit countries here that's going way outside Europe, bringing in the United States and the Japanese to a series of very firm and specific measures and it's a very good advance. How difficult a diplomatic struggle was it to convince the other summit members? Quite difficult. And a number of countries started off by being strong on rhetoric and short on action. A factor that helped concentrate minds was yesterday's rocket terrorist attack near the summit. This summit declaration largely resembles what was hammered out by common market ministers last month, but Libya has been further isolated. And the summit put out another statement criticizing the Soviet Union for its secrecy over the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. It called for an international agreement to exchange information about similar accidents in future. In Britain, official precautions against radiation from the Chernobyl disaster now include safety checks on milk and vegetables and a warning to people in some areas not to drink rainwater. The government-appointed Radiological Protection Board says people in Scotland, North Wales and North West England should not drink fresh rainwater, though it says water from wells and streams is safe. Levels of radiation at Wilver Nuclear Power Station in Anglesey have now gone down from the 20% increase recorded over the weekend. Scientists working at government laboratories in Surrey say milk taken from the north has shown higher than normal radiation levels, although not enough to cause alarm, and there are no immediate plans to withdraw supplies. Some fresh vegetables are also slightly contaminated, but those can be washed off. Background radiation levels monitored from Harwell registered a sharp increase over the weekend where heavy rain in the north washed radioactivity out of the air. We're giving, I think, three lots of advice. The first is that tap water, ordinary main supplies are entirely unaffected to all intents and purposes, no problem at all. We're also saying that people who drink fresh rainwater straight off their roofs or straight off their tent fly sheets if they're camping have been all right for the last couple of days. And thirdly, that it'd be quite sensible if they stop drinking that water for the next, say, week or until we get more measurements to show that it's harmless. Yep. At Wilver in Anglesey, the radiation was high enough to set off sensitive monitoring equipment, although it would have to be a thousand times higher to cause alarm. 
but bird watchers are worried that migrating birds may be contaminated in their Russian breeding grounds from where there are reports of piles of dead birds. Lord Shinwell, affectionately known throughout the Labour movement as Manny Shinwell, is very seriously ill. He's being cared for at home in northwest London. His son, Ernest, says he's got bronchial pneumonia in both lungs, and it's feared that Lord Shinwell may be close to death. He's now 101, and just a year ago was fit enough to tour the site of his birthplace in East London, one century after the event. Emmanuel Shinwell first took his seat in the Commons in 1922. As backbencher, minister, and more recently in the Lords, his voice in Labour's affairs has been clearly heard ever since. I want to thank you one and all for your kindness, generosity. Thank you very much indeed. And bless you. In Belfast, the homes of a Methodist prison chaplain and a prison officer were damaged in petrol bomb attacks early this morning. Nobody was hurt in either attack, although five bullets were fired through the house where the minister and his family were sleeping. We don't know why uh, this particular house was picked out. We haven't a clue. And I mean, we have nowhere to move to. It's as simple as that. It isn't our home, it's the church's home. We have no alternative but to stay here. Belfast police say they don't know who's behind the attack. Prison officers at Gloucester Jail have now agreed to return to work while national negotiations over manning levels go ahead. After talks with the prison governor, they issued a joint statement agreeing to work together to improve prison conditions. Police in Bournemouth are searching for the killer of a young office clerk found strangled in a flooded ditch. Detectives are looking for a handbag belonging to 27-year-old Sandra Court. It contained 20 pounds. Sandra disappeared on her way home from an office party on Saturday night. The parents of four schoolboys swept to their deaths by a giant wave at Land's End a year ago have just arrived there at the end of a 320-mile charity walk from Stoke Poges in Buckinghamshire. They're raising money for a new lifeboat for the area. South African police say gunmen stormed a hospital near Durban and freed a suspected ANC guerrilla who'd been wounded in a clash with security forces last week. A man visiting the hospital at Peter Maritzburg was killed and two policemen were injured. In what was an unprecedented and audacious move to free a wanted terrorist, a group of up to seven men calmly walked into the hospital, each wearing a white medical coat. Once inside, they produced their weapons and fired wildly as they burst into the intensive care unit. They wheeled the alleged ANC man out of the hospital on a trolley, still firing their guns. They ripped out the intravenous strips and the blood transfusion system, which were attached to the patient. A visitor to the hospital, a 20-year-old black man, was shot dead. Two policemen guarding the alleged terrorist at his bedside were injured and equipment in the unit was damaged. Now, soccer and Oxford United have won their fight to stay in the first division by just one point. The Milk Cup winners beat Arsenal 3-0 at home this afternoon to ensure their own first division survival and condemn Ips Ipswich to relegation along with Birmingham and West Bromwich. The Prince and Princess of Wales have been visiting logging country in British Columbia. The royal couple did their own bit of lumberjacking there. They planted a sapling. But as usual, it was the princess's flair for fashion and her easy manner that won the hearts of the crowds. Even more time than usual was spent in seeing and being seen, with special attention to the elderly, the infirm and the handicapped. Your royal Though the town's a centre of the timber industry, it needs all the trees it can get, according to the mayor, so the prince and princess added yet another. He noted from experience that it was a dangerous occupation, but she also added her shovels full and directed operations. Who are you trying to impress? The <laughs> The royal couple were here mainly to open a festival of the arts. They met the performers, and in an unlikely setting, an ice hockey stadium in a timber town, the prince weighed in with some philosophical reflections of his own. And we must strive, if we can, to make living into an art itself, although it will always remain a tremendous struggle. And that's all for now. Our main news tonight is on BBC One at five past nine.
Games here. We've had nine of these uh, May Day bank holidays and every single one of them has been cool and not only cool today of course with all this cloud around many places have been wet as well. So is much of Europe. If you wanted some hot weather go to Eastern Europe. The temperature there towards the 80s. In fact it's hardly surprising that area of low pressure really is going to keep uh, things pretty unsettled for some time to come. The southwestern half of the country though will have a bright end of the day, some sunshine, one or two showers, but northeastern areas uh, there is some rain around but that'll clear away during the course of the night, although the cloud will remain sort of fairly variable through the night, one or two showers coming along from time to time as well. Temperatures are one thing we certainly won't have to worry about, not a particularly cold night. Tomorrow, bright or right, I think, in most parts of the country, some sunshine around, but there will be showers as well. In fact, even at the beginning of the day, some longer outbreaks of rain in those western areas. And as the day goes on, so showers in most places will tend to become heavier and more frequent. And indeed, in the south and southeastern corner of England, they could merge together to give once again some longer spells of rain. Temperatures are round about the normal in most places, but along that east coast, where you keep some fog, particularly cool. Entertainment for Bank Holiday Monday on BBC One. In five minutes, Nadia, the story of the 14-year-old Romanian girl gymnast who captured the hearts of millions by scoring the first ever perfect 10 in the Olympic Games. Nadia Comaneci. What a scrum half she could have been. And don't forget the verbal gymnastics as usual, here on Wogan, live at 7. At 7.40, Paul Daniels' Million Pound Magic Show with some very surprised guests. <laughs>